Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning. It is the Earth Master back here on this weekend, Saturday, November 15th or 25th, 2023, about 12:50 p.m. here, California time. The latest activity looks like a one. I seen 1.3 up here in Alaska. Uh, I did see a little bit of uptick here across the Middle America Trench southward into the South America region overnight, uh, and also, of course, big time clustering going on across the Indonesia Islands region. And some deeper activity triggering out here across the Vanuatu area. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. Looking at the last 12 hours of earthquake activity, though, here across the Grindavik area of Iceland. Still shows, uh, well, some earthquake activity. Uh, no major changes have been noted here. Still seeing that movement north of Hagafell, uh, which is north of Grindavik, Iceland, uh, as a potential prime area of the potential eruption we're still waiting on that uh, of course the longer the more days that go on here the less likely that we're going to see any type of volcanic activity at the surface levels right now everything's underneath the region here away from Grindavik, which is good uh, the largest earthquake in the last 12 hours here looks to be a 2.5 within that region here north of Hagafell, uh, where they think still we could see a, a potential uh, eruption event take place there now here's the latest information here from the Icelandic Met Office no update today uh, if we check out the latest information here this update was put out yesterday so that means things have not changed overnight um, we'll have to wait till tomorrow for an official update here from these folks uh, in terms of maybe any changes but I'm not seeing it we're not really looking at any further uh, larger scale earthquake uptick uh, obviously there is some uh, some areas that we're watching uh, around that uh, Hagafell area also a little bit of earthquake swarming up here in a new specific area uh, well away from this region but within that volcanic zone that rift zone this little rift area here across Iceland pretty sufficient right there along the plate boundary and uh, just kind of watching that it's been a little hot spot area of new earthquake activity here in the last couple days. So uh, we'll get a maybe an update in regards to that uh, from the Iceland Met Office if they feel it's needed. But right now, just a um, pretty good earthquake activity well north of that region that we'll continue to keep an eye on. All right, uh, back out of here. Let's go to the USGS map here. This is the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. Northern California up here still having some movement. Um, looks like the latest one here shows a 1.5. Earlier, we did see a 3.1 uh, just outside Eureka area. Now, this is 21 kilometers deep into the subduction zone here of the Cascadia Mega Thrust area. And chatting about this a little bit last night, how any type of tremor that we're seeing downstream here uh, is adding some much further strain up here at the surface levels towards the strain area where all that uh, tension and pressure tends to build over the years uh, for the next mega quake out here across the Pacific Northwest. It just seems like it's very sensitive right now. Any kind of minor tremor uh, triggers earthquakes upstream. So continue to watch that. We'll check back on the tremor tonight once they uh, upload the, uh, the uh, data from, that, uh, from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. That'll come out a little bit later on this evening. Um, so, yeah, keep an eye, North, uh, Northern California here, southern end of the Cascadia Megathrust area. The rest of California here, mostly smaller microquake activity. Not a big deal at all down there. No major swarms going on. No major unusual activity. The San Andreas Fault continues to sleep. But uh, one day it will not be so quiet. 2.0 out here outside of uh, Carson City, Nevada. Nothing big, just a little small earthquake activity out there today. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here on the map, so let's go check that out just to reassure. There's been times in the past where I take the uh, information that's given to us there on the map and roll with it, only to find out that there's actually a big-time swarm going on there at Yellowstone. That was in the past. Today, well, a little bit of earthquake activity here. These are uh, indeed earthquakes. They're not really showing up too strongly across uh, any other seismograph stations here. 
Uh, definitely around Mary Lake. This does not look like wind. These actually look like definitely small earthquakes here localized to this area. And uh, there's definitely a handful of them, quite a few. Nothing showing up on the USGS map because the, well, it's a weekend for one and they only report uh, 2.5 and above. Hopefully they'll get to some of those smaller quakes uh, come Monday morning. 3.3 uh, in Utah earlier this morning as well. Very shallow earthquake. It's got a negative depth on it. Uh, movement outside of uh, Pecos, Texas continuing here today. Looks like quite a few ones out there in the last 24 hours. Nothing going on across the New Madrid or the uh, rest of the country out here. There's that elevated movement here across the Middle America Trench southward. Not a whole lot showing up on that map, but we can definitely see it here on the Earthquake 3D globe with quite a few threes clustering here across the area of Guatemala, El Salvador area, uh, potentially Costa Rica region um, as well. Further down south, pretty good clustering going on here in the middle or in the uh, middle section of the Peru Chile Trench. That's going to be right about here. Quite a few fours stirring up there at the deeper levels of this subduction zone. We'll keep an eye on this area, maybe for some uh, some larger scale movement upstream. There's that 5.1 Ecuador this morning, 151 kilometers deep overall. Uh, seismic activity here, somewhat elevated, and at the deeper levels of that subduction zone. Uh, out there in the uh, Pacific, got the big island out here, right? Looking at some earthquake activity in a uh, little fashion here where the magma intrusion is continuing underneath the Kilauea volcano. Although it's down there a ways, looks like uh, about two to three kilometers below the surface. Let's go ahead and check out the latest uh, information here from the HVO. If they have it put up, let's see here. Yep. Uh, the volcano is currently not erupting. Uh, moderate levels of seismicity continue in the southwest rift zone, summit, and upper east rift zone. Looks like about the same information there as what they had reported yesterday. I'm going to check out the inflation data, see what's going on here across the uh, volcano on the Big Island. This has been going up and down, and looks like we're back to the inflation phase. This is uh, elevated inflation there in the last two days. Obviously, though, uh, this is still continuing, and uh, we're still above the previous level peak here, uh, but we see these little series of, uh, oh, it looks like maybe three or so levels of increasing inflation before a drop-off, and then it just recycles here. Looks like we're in the second one right now. This may go down slightly throughout the day today, and then should come back up, potentially, before another downslope in deflation. It's crazy. Um, it's definitely been like this here for the past 45 days, almost two months or so, of this similar type event, with each event getting larger and larger uh, in terms of the inflation, the swelling, so to speak. So not for sure how much more swelling that area is going to handle, but uh, we'll continue to watch it. There's not a whole lot of activity there at the surface levels. Obviously, there is... Uh, volcanic gases and whatnot, but uh, nothing in terms of visible uh, magma or lava here at the surface levels. Definitely watch that. All right, uh, what else do we got going on here across the Western Pacific? Still seeing some activity over here across the Mariana Islands, Mariana Trench. Pretty shallow earthquake activity out here. A couple fives and some fours overnight. Of course, this area did see a 6.9 earthquake here. That was um, a pretty good sized earthquake. Super early yesterday morning. Uh, but since then, I've definitely seen a handful of earthquakes there. Fives and fours coming in. I'm sure there's quite a few more earthquakes in the three and two range in that area, but still slightly elevated here across this area. Um, nothing going on up north yet across the Kuro Kamachaka. That's a little scary because this region is definitely building up quite a bit of strain here, but it's not showing it. Uh, I think it will here soon, though. Um, there's all that clustering here across the uh, pretty much the Taiwan area southward through the Philippines into the Indonesia Islands area. Quite the mess of earthquake activity today. 
Uh, it does look like it's trying to make its way across this plate boundary here, the Java Trench, where all that uh, smaller quake activity is triggering. We'll keep an eye on that region there around the Java Trench today. Uh, some older movement up there into China. Mediterranean region looks fairly quiet, aside from some twos and maybe even a three out there. <clears throat> the Atlantic Ocean, quiet. Nothing really going on there on the Earthquake 3D globe. Continue to keep an eye, though, on the Iceland area. Right now, it's just kind of taking its, uh, taking its time, taking a little break, I guess. But again, the longer, the more days that goes on here with, uh, without an eruption across this area, uh, the less likely that we're going to see one. All right, space weather activity. See what's going on here across the sun today. We are looking at quite the handful of sunspots. Let me bring up the latest one. That's the uh, one from last night, I think. Here's the latest imagery. Um, unfortunately, this area, this massive region that we're looking at, had some high hopes for, uh, still looks like it's declining and stabilizing out here against uh, amongst some of these cores. Even this one over here that was pretty uh, active in terms of complexity or uh, stabilizing, it looks like, overnight. So not for sure we're going to see anything major blasting off of these areas. Um, we do have, still have a fairly complex structure down here. This one looks like it may be grown slightly on the southwestern quadrant of the sun. And what's behind it? Well, we got some active regions, but they... Uh, they're not all that impressive looking, at least here on the magnetogram image. Overall, though, we still have a threat 99% chance for C-flare. M-flare at 60, X-flare still elevated around 10% chance or so. <clears throat> now, you can tell we definitely died off here in terms of the... Uh, I looked for this popcorn effect here on the chart. Is this one working? Yeah, we are. Uh, which we've seen, I would say, in the past uh, two days, but last 24 hours here we kind of mellowed out slightly kind of leveling back down to the uh, c flare low c flare category uh, with not a whole lot uh, overnight looks like maybe a little c flare but uh, we'll keep an eye on it and see if things change uh, we do have some storming conditions coming in <coughs> looks like we're peeking up here into the g1 class storm at least according to the uh, chart here uh, one of these models showing a G2 class storm overnight. Right now, though, things are uh, things are kind of kicking up slightly there across the auroras, or I mean, for the uh, polar region, some auroras being reported up there. Uh, looks like that may continue overnight, so might get a little show up here across Canada. I don't know if it's going to dip down into the northern tier states here or not, uh, but the forecast is showing for. G1 class storm uh, conditions throughout the evening and uh, into tomorrow as well. So we'll keep an eye on that, see if anything kicks up out here as far as further intensity goes. Uh, that is due in part, looks like me, well, looks like it's due to a coronal mass ejection. Didn't really hear anything about it until it hit us. It's crazy how um, these storms will pop up out of the blue here for a solar uh, weather uptick. And then uh, when they do call for something big, say like a G2 or G3 storm, it never materializes. Kind of crazy. Completely opposite of uh, what they were forecasting. I don't think they had called for uh, some elevated conditions like that, but they're happening. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, but far as the flaring goes, I don't know if we're going to see anything major. To me, it looks like things are just stabilized. There's quite a few sunspots out here. The main one, I think, anyway, if I had to pick one, would be 3500 in terms of complexity. Quite a bit of different colors within this magnetic core. That's an indicator of different types of uh, magnetic uh, fields in this within this core. And technically, I, I mean, yeah, if I had to pick one, I would watch this area. We'll keep an eye on that, though, and see if uh, anything changes uh, no severe weather outlook today, it looks like. Things are fairly calm. And far as any major activity goes, well, let's check out the long-term models here and see what we have going on. We do have high pressure out there up in the Gulf of Alaska. Cooler temperatures, bringing some snow down into Kansas and I think Oklahoma today. 
that's going to scoot to the east and uh, bring some much cooler temperatures early next week across portions of the well the majority of the eastern uh, seaboard area california might have well looks like we're going to get some troughing going on here ourselves late next week uh, that should bring in some uh, cooler air and some rainfall hopefully let's look at the uh, precipitation amounts out here looks like everyone's getting in on a little bit of rain pacific northwest mostly look at that way up here a lot of rainfall accumulated here in, in the uh, south eastern portion of the country as well uh, so we'll take it this ain't really that big of a deal out here along the west coast i'm hoping that changes to some uh a little bit more heavier precipitation but it's still early in the season all right guys i am out of here enjoy your weekend uh let's see what we got for seismograph stations here iceland's offline i'll see if i can't bring that back here a little bit later um not a whole lot going on not for sure if this is earthquake activity little spikes there on that seismograph up at uh, Mount St. Helens or not. It may be wind up there. Let me see what we got here for the uh, <clears throat> the windy map. Beautiful app. I love this app. So many things you can do with it in a simple layout. Um, it does look like they have some wind up there. I know it's a little bit further north up here, but uh, let's see. Not a lot, but there's definitely a little bit of wind stirring up. I'm sure higher up into the Cascades across this area uh big time storms up there goodness i would like to have some of that down here in the west coast hopefully we can make that happen all right folks i'm out of here have a good day stay safe out there and uh, we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on tonight take care